All right, people, welcome back to another rumored uh, ban list. You know, a couple of these are popping up as we're getting closer and closer to, uh, of course, the release of the real list. So I want to inform you that the previous list and this current one that I'm doing in this video are not the real list. They are not the real list, and, you know, they have uh, one the upper Konami people has pretty much stated that, yeah, you know, there's no end date, and, uh, you know, they're going to be using that list for uh, the... WCQs for Euro, so yes, they're going to give us the ban list, but hold on, hold on, so this is some pretty big news that I'm going to go ahead and give you guys right here before you guys be like, oh my god, when's the list, oh, we're going to freak out, we can't handle it anymore, here you go, here it is, it's actually uh, pretty much stating that there's actually going to be a maintenance on the main um, website, and as you can clearly see there, temporary asterisk due to maintenance during, uh, you know, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on July 6, 2015, uh, PGT, uh, what's that, PGT time? I don't know what that is. And, you know, the EU, uh, EU one, because I believe Europe has a different uh, kind of Yu-Gi-Oh um, base. But, uh, you know, they still get their ban list, uh, just like uh, all TCG. And they will begin theirs um, from 3.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. on July 7th, 2015, CEST time. So pretty much, there's going to be an update on the the main uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! website. Does this mean that's the ban list? No, probably, possibly. But, this, you know, this is the best we're going to get to, you know, when it comes to like, hey, when are we getting the list before we freaking, you know, riot and get our pitchforks and spam call Konami like we did last time. It was, that was kind of embarrassing. I'm glad I wasn't a part of that because, wow, like, really? So, uh, there you go. There you go. So, somewhere around July 6th, July 7th, like I stated before, it's about the time that they're going to go ahead and do this thing. They're going to go ahead and put up the list and probably, just like last time after Nationals, we'll probably go from, like, July 14th or 13th, whatever that Monday is, to, you know, October. So, anyway, look forward to it. But anyway, we have another predictive list, you know, once again, people are like, yeah, you know, well, I got evidence right here, you know, card hot evidence that this is going to be, this is the predicted list. So, you know, we're going to once again go over these lists and, um, you know, get my opinion of it. So, uh, just wanted to go ahead and start this video off before you get too into it, this, you know, a service announcement. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get to this supposed predicted leaked list. Be right back. All right, we are back, and once again, we have another rumored list. They're like, oh, this is it. This is the real list. So, once again, just like last time, it was a lot of fun. Got a lot of views and a lot of interaction with people. So, I was like, you know what? There's another rumored list. I'm going to go ahead and do a video about it. Why not? Why not? So, uh, this is another rumored list. I'm going to go ahead and give my opinion about it. In the comment section below, you guys give your opinion about it. I'm going to go ahead and have this. Discussions. It was awesome. Uh, thank you for all support on the first rumored list. This is the second rumored list. Hopefully you guys aren't tired of these and you actually find these kind of amusing to watch. And, uh, you know, we will be getting the ban list soon, of course. You know, coming up next week. So, prepare your anuses. Anyway, let's go ahead and go down this list, get my opinion, and, uh, and yeah, enjoy. So, starting off banned. And this is actually a little bit different than the last one. So, uh, prepare for some differences. So, starting off, we have banned. We have Necros of Trishula banned. So, there's a handful of people that say that, you know, when it comes to hitting Necros, if we ban Trishula, then the deck won't be good because, you know, Trishula is, you know, one of the bites of the deck, you know. They generally, they'll go ahead and summon Trishula and pick something out of your hand, pick something off your field, pick something in your grave, and bam, that's power. So, some people believe that, yes, if you ban Trish, then, you know, Necros won't have any teeth to bite you with. They'll just, you know, try to gum you to death, and that, you know, they won't be that scary anymore. I'm in disagreement, you know. I've seen a handful of duels where they never summon Trish and win. I've seen a handful of duels where they do summon Trish and win. And, you know, it's not like Trish is the figurehead of the deck that makes the deck good, in my opinion. I think what makes the deck good is the high consistency. Generally, when it comes to the top decks, high consistency uh, equates to less luck, you know. And the less luck you have in Yu-Gi-Oh, the better. And you're probably thinking, like, well, what, that doesn't make any sense. You want good luck, but if you can take out luck out of the equation, then it only makes it better for you, you know. Because if you're using a consistent deck and your opponent's using an un inconsistent deck, you know, their luck may fluctuate, you know, sometimes depending on how you shuffle, how you cut, you know, they can get various hands and, you know, you can go ahead and cut them into, you know, a death cut and get them a shitty hand while, you know, you're using a super consistent deck. So while your hand may not be the best, you can go ahead and search and, you know, plus and get resources to make your hand good. And that's exactly one of the things that Necros does. It has high searchability, high consistency, and able to pull off powerful plays without staying down. And, you know, 
hitting necros with Trishula doesn't affect any of those things. So, you know, in my opinion, I think that you should just go after the consistency. You know, lower the dex consistency, not too much to kill it, but just enough to bring it down apart to make it more luck influential and uh, not as searchy. You know, because of course, mistake is a great card against necros, and can you know necros play outside of mistake? Sure, but does it hurt? Of course. But um, you know, banning necros with Trishula, in my opinion. That's just taking one card. It's just taking really like one card out of the deck. You know, they really wanted some more bite. They could play more Gunnir because Gunnir is pretty powerful too. So, anyway, next card we have once again the Volvo Chain. Like, I get it. It's for Clown Blade, but you know, if that's what you want to do, go ahead and hit Volvo Chain because uh, you know the powerful Volvo Chain. And, you know, Clown Blade is pretty powerful. You know, really, you only need like one Armageddon Knight because where you go, you go Armageddon Knight, send Trick Clown, take your thousand, send it back, go into Volvo Chain, Volvo Chain get. Each has Armageddon Knight, 10,000 blades, and when they kill that Lolo Chain, or the Lolo Chain uses its effect again, you can go ahead, uh, Trick Clown, summon back, take the thousand, summon thousand blades. So, you know, you really only need like one Armageddon Knight to go ahead and get the Clown Blade uh, play starting, of course, with Rota Act 3, Armageddon Knight, the Warrior. Uh, you know, it might be super consistent, especially in, you know, comparison to OCG, uh, to where the, the Clown Blade combos to be real. You know, it's just in my opinion, Clown Blade's not as strong at, in here in the TCG than it is in the OCG because we just don't have them cards and make, you know, Clown Blade, like, oh my god, you know, we don't have Shockmaster, we don't have Infinity, we don't have, you know, Utopia the Lightning, and, you know, those are some of the main cards that make, uh, you know, Clown Blade so potent and powerful. So, uh, you know, I mean, really, that's the best you're gonna get, maybe... Maybe go into like a Patola Myos and Detach 3, summon uh, a Pleiades or one XE material, or, you know, Castell or 101 your opponent a couple of times, but, you know, it's just not as potent. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure if they really want to go ahead and hit it. I guess we'll find out. But, you know, is the Wild Chain a fun choice? Yeah, in my opinion, it's, it's a fun choice. You want to go ahead and stop Crown Blade? Yeah, you know, but Foolish at 1, and you know how powerful Foolish is, uh, maybe a Toolbox monster that that's a foolish is maybe just a little bit too much you know it's all the wall chain has always been a very powerful monster so maybe if they want to go ahead and ban it that's two lists now that are predicted to be real it's predicted to be the leaked list that both have the wall chain so you know get a little bit suspicious on that one all right next the card that we have banned is vanity's emptiness yes vanity's emptiness uh that's the last card that's on this list that's banned and I'm personally i'm okay with vanity's that one you know i'm like hey soul charge can be at one vanity's can be at one you know are they cards that we could be without? Yeah, sure. You know, if you want to go ahead and ban Vanities and ban Soul Charge, I don't care. You know, but they've been fine at one. You know, you just have to lower the consistency of Vanities. Is it still a really good card? Yes, yeah, fantastic card. But uh, at least, you know, you don't have to face down triple Vanities. And, you know, that was the problem. You know, I was like saying, you know, Vanity should probably be that one. But, you know, if Konami wants to go ahead and ban Emptiness, then, hey, more power to you. You know, because I thought that maybe Super Poly was you know, find that one, they decided to ban it, so I'm not sure if this list is taken, you know, that into consideration in the same boat, where they're just like, all right, well, we put Vanities at one, but, you know, it's still putting in too much work, well, we're gonna have to go ahead and ban it, just like we're oppression, so, I don't know, uh, should it be banned? I mean, in a, in a sense, you know, stopping special summoning Yu-Gi-Oh! is like, oh, you can't do that, you know, but, uh, this is probably the most balanced version of stopping special summoning that we're gonna get, so, you know, there you go, so, there you go, that, those are the three bans. As you can clearly see, uh, no hits to uh, Real Magical Library, nothing to do with any Chicken Race FTKs at all, so yeah. And also nothing to do with the Jin. Well, while you may ban the Lobo Chain, you know, you could still totally go, you know, tour guide, summon the Jin, or just run more Djinn. So, uh, you know, Necros, you may have lost your uh, Trishula, but you can still go ahead and Jin lock your opponent. And, you know, that's still just another thing that makes that deck so potent, so... Anyway, we are moving on to the limited section. So first thing for the limited section, we have Trishula. Yeah, I know. Ban Trishula, bring back Trishula. <laughs> and of course, you know, the Trishula, the the Synchro Monster, is stronger than the the, the Ritual because uh, it doesn't have to hit the three locations like the Ritual one does. And, you know, that's a fine balancing factor. You know, I mean, there's so much there's so much you can do to balance, you know, you know Trishula's effect without changing it from Trishula. 
So, uh, you know, Banish from Hand, Banish from Fail, Banish from Grave, yes. But the original Trishila doesn't have to. It's not mandatory. It says you can. So it's not mandatory that you have to banish from all three locations like the Necros one does. So, of course, the Necro one, if your opponent doesn't have a card in one of those three locations, then your effect doesn't go off. Or the original Trishila, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I can just pick from your hand and not your field and error. So, of course, one of the major things uh, that got Trishila banned is... Um, uh, Infernities pretty much going first turn Trish and Trishing your entire hand out of, you know, through their synchro version of their deck, you know, before, you know, the wall chain exceed and the exceed version was popular in one world. It was actually a synchro version and they would pretty much go, all right, Trish, first turn, Trish, give me that card. You know, I think it went like, uh, desynchro, resynchro, give me that card out of your hand. Give me that card, give me that card, give me that card. And, you know, you pretty much have no cards in your hand drawing into one by the time it's your first turn facing down against trash and, of course, you know, barriers and shit. And it was just gross. It was nasty. And, you know, uh, pretty much instead of really hitting uh, Infernities, which, of course, Infernities didn't really get hit until they won Worlds, which is, they decided to go ahead and ban Trish. So, a handful of people are like, you know, you can bring Trish back. Oh, she do has Trish. You can bring Trish back. And I personally don't care. Do I think that hitting Necros or Trish is the correct decision for uh, Necros? No. But do I think that, you know, keeping Trish on the, our current list in TCG? No. Eh. You know, I'm trying to be less less conservative here, trying to be a little bit more liberal. You know, like really, what deck could really use Trish? It's not like we have to worry about Infernities doing that all over again, right? You know, I guess the only deck that I can really see synchroing into 9 maybe is, you know, Yang Zing, but, you know... Depending on the duel, you know, I might want to rather go into, you know, I like Chao Fang. So, you know, that's also 9 as well, so. Decisions, decisions. But anyway, this deck, I mean, this list has Trish being banned and Trish coming back to 1. What do you think about them switching places like that? Like, oh, okay. Anyway, next we have Wind Up Carriers and Mighty. Uh, I, I personally don't think the Wind Ups are too terrible. You know, I'm... You never see me predict anything about windups on the on my balance predictions just because I don't have any precedence on that. I mean, it seems like if they wanted to move windup stuff, they would have moved it a long time ago. So it's kind of like maybe in the same boat as like maybe like how uh, Glad's were, where it's just like, yeah, we're not moving this shit for a long, 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 long time. You know, could they bring back them body? Yeah, they could. You know, it's not like windups have the cards that you know they had uh, a while ago. They don't have shock masters, so they can't shock lock you. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Even with one carry, I don't even think they ran the Hunter, but, you know, I think, I think OCG was like, you know, I banned Hunter, and I think they brought carry to, I think, two, but, uh, I think, I think if you have two characters, then you can probably Hunter your opponent's hand away, so, you know, if they want to go ahead and bring this up, then, you know, it might be best to go ahead and just, uh, set precedence for OCG and ban Hunter, because Hunter was the, really the stupid one to come, besides them doing Shock Lock all the time, but, you know, Shock Master's banned, uh, you know, we don't have Infinity, so you really can't do that play, you know, it's just, uh, it's just another kind of sync happy deck, but, you know, the toolbox isn't as uh, potent as it was in the past, so, I don't know. Anyway, moving on, next card, we have Demok, and once again, another list that predicts Demok, yet we have no print for it, it just seems kind of weird that it's, it's just like, yeah, Demok's coming off, and I'm just like, well, well if Demok comes off, what does Konami expect us to do, to go ahead and, uh, you know, go and get old Demox and then, you know, carry around the Rada. It seems like if they're going to bring off Demox, they're going to get, you know, th that's a cash opportunity. You know, throw Demox in some set, you know, make it a card that you want to, a card that you want to get, unban Demox with its Rada, and then bam, go get it, you know? But, you know, to just unban Demox with no set Rada date for, you know, a reprint in TCG just sounds weird. And, you know, so once again, makes uh, any supposed leak list suspicious in any prediction that anybody predicts that Demok will come off or Kassim will come off just wrong. Just like you just don't have the uh, evidence. You know, you obviously have precedence that Konami's going to go ahead and print the card, you know, because they probably could have, you know, brought the other band cards back a long time ago, even despite the reprint. But as soon as the reprint was announced, bam, they were on the next list. So why wouldn't they do the same thing? This doesn't make any sense to me. So this list has Demok, the other list had Demok, so I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Demok will come off and everybody go ahead and get your old ass Demox and, you know, carry around the new errata effect on your phone. How inconvenient. Anyway, moving on, we have We have Nova. Yeah, Nova. Uh, I I talk about this often. I personally as a Telnet player and an unbiased one too. Cause I do I think Telnet should get hit? Yes. Do I think Nova should be the card to get hit? No. Because all it is is just a counter trap, you know? Plenty of decks have counter traps and uh I just don't get a where you're getting the precedence for hitting this card, and b why you would hit it in the first place. I mean, it's not even that. 
potent when it comes to what makes Teller Knights potent at all, you know? So, uh, people are like, oh, you plus too much. It's a zero. It's a zero. I tribute monster. I draw a card. I negate your card. It's a zero. And uh, it's not like you can search for it, like Infernity Barrier. And I'm not telling people, like, oh, you know, Alpha Nova to one because Barrier is at one. They're both counter traps. Like, no. Barrier was searchable. Nova is not. You're drawn to it just like any other counter trap in any other deck, you know? As I'm saying, just like, oh, so whenever a deck starts doing well, instead of actually hitting the core elements of the deck that make the deck good, like, oh, multiple Altairs, the high consistency of getting to nap, trivial looping, like, no, instead of hitting that, we're going to go ahead and go after the counter trap. So if any other deck that has a counter trap starts doing well, we just go after counter trap, we start, you know, going to use Senju's counter trap, Zephyr's counter trap, and shit. You know what? What else deck has a counter trap? Well, let's go after fucking Gravekeepers. They have a counter trap. It's like, like no, you know, there's clearly something that makes the deck good, and, you know, uh, randomly drawing into a counter trap. I mean, I get you want to lower the consistency of getting, getting it, but that's not going to change the play as much. I've won plenty of duels I even know that my opponent wants. Now, have I tripped the living shit on my opponent? Oh, hell yeah, you know? Yeah, that triple call of the haunted, that triple phoenix trend, that triple oasis, hell yeah. Then fucking summon trip and turn them all to my hand, turn all your shit to your hand. Hey, then you're fucking, you know, monster summon from the extra deck. Oh, she neg. Oh, let me pick something out of your hand. Oh, Triv. Bro, busted. No, Triv is fine. It's no, the counter trap. Ooh, like, no. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, anyway, moving on. We have Elsadal Construct. And while well, no would be, be the incorrect hit for Talonites, Construct is the correct hit for Shadals, and I am in agreement. If you hit nothing in Shadals but Construct 1, I think that would totally be just yes. You know, uh, Construct is the leader of the deck. Construct is the strongest monster in deck, just like I believe that Triv is the stupid card in Talonites. Uh, and if you just go ahead and lower Construct on 1, you only got one Construct. Because, of course, Construct is the answer to everything. Your opponent summons an extra deck monster. Bam. Play that, that Shadal Fusion. Send a uh, Light. Send a Dark Construct. Then that Dark Monster gets its effect. And Construct will get its effect. And, you know, you'll get to send a whole bunch of Shadals. And then Construct will go ahead and kill 28 Beater. Uh, that's like a catastrophe. Especially some monsters just like, bam, Construct. Yeah. And then, of course, when you're pushing for that OTK and you're like, all right, Construct, attack. El Shadal Fusion, I'm going to fuse Construct, which is my light target, and the Shadal Monster, which is my dark tar target, bam, into another Construct, and then Construct Effect, and that Dark Monster Effect, and then Construct Effect, go ahead and give me my El Shadal Fusion back to my hand, and, you know, uh, you know, multiple Constructs is ridiculous, you can't even have two, you know, Construct has to be at one, because then you can just go Construct into Construct, Construct into Construct, like, no, you need one Construct, and Construct is the correct hit, I mean, I am in not disagreement, you know, and I'll, I'm still debating on whether, you know, El Shadal Fusion should get hit, maybe down to two, uh, just because, you know, how powerful it is, as potent as it is as an OTK card. And no, I'm not going to the extreme, like, oh, so you were like, Construct Ban, El Shadal Fusion to 1, uh, Sinister Shadow Games to 1, Mathematician to 1, Armageddon Knight to 1, you know, and just literally kick fucking Shadal until they're fucking nothing. But, you know, for a first initial hit, Construct to 1, yeah. And, you know, whether you want to put El Shadal Fusion down to 1, I mean, down to 2 is debatable, because with one Construct, you know, Kind of, it's kind of difficult. Well, you don't want to hit, you know, Elshadal Fusion too hard because then if you lower the deck's consistency of fusion, then the deck is going to die as well. Because have you ever dueled against your dolls when they and they don't fuse? It's a sad sight, sad sight. So, yeah, Constructor 1 is definitely the correct decision. Next, we have our Burning Abyss hit. We have Graft 1. And this is wrong. <laughs> so, another, it has wrong, right, wrong. Uh, Graft is powerful, sure. You get to go ahead and summon a Burning Abyss monster from your deck. That's great. That's But no matter how much... Burning Abyss, you summon from your deck, you're never going to summon Dante. Dante is the leader of the deck. And if you're going to hit anybody, you know, you really don't need Fire Lake, you know. As we clearly saw from uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Noah Green, who only ran one Fire Lake, uh, it's not that really potent of a card. I mean, yes, it's potent of a card, but then Burning Abyss only run multiple, so, you know, it's not like everybody's running around with triple Fire Lake, so, you know. Uh, you know, you could probably put Dante down to two. And lower the consistency of, you know, triple Dante, triple Dante, triple Dante. But uh, in my opinion, I think the card you should hit is Sir. Uh, Sir is the one that loops with Dante. Because, of course, you know, you go ahead and summon Dante with Sir. And then Dante dies. Dante's going to give you back your Sir. And Sir is going to send you back your Dante. And you summon the Sir. And Sir, Sir will summon back your Dante. And Dante will give you back your Sir. And then loopity, 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 loop. You know, it's Sir. Sir is summoning Dante from a graveyard. Just gives you more Dante. And Dante, of course, will grab you a Burning Abyss card from your graveyard. Back to your hand. Grab you back that Fire Lake. Grab you back that Sir again. So, you know, Graph is nice and all. But I think it's Sir. I'm putting my finger at Sir. Sir is the one that should get hit. You know, if anybody should be on the limited list, it's not Graph. It's Sir. You know, if they wanted to go ahead and, uh, you know, limit Sir, I'd be fine with that. Maybe put Dante down to two. 
there you go. I think those will be fine. Burning Abyss hits. So, but not Graph. Graph can stay at three. You can summon as many Burning Abyss monsters from your deck as you want. But Burning Abyss burns, unless you're going to summon Graph to summon Sir to summon Dante. But you only have one Sir, so. Anyway, moving on. We have... Both light and shadowing prison mirror, and of course, once again, this makes me suspicious because it's not like light imprisoning and shadow prisoning really did much this format, you know, especially with Necros being the top deck. You know, who's really running around with light and shadow imprisoning mirror? <laughs> but uh, you know, out of all the floodgate cards, I mean, really, like light imprisoning and shadow imprisoning. Like, if there's any, you know, finger they should point at and have a floodgate be on the limited list, it should be lose one turn. So you know, once again, another suspicious thing. It's just like, why, why, why are these two? You, know, you could have hit these two a long fucking time ago, so to just do it now when, you know, the top deck's not even light or dark, it's just like, oh, okay, I, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. And, yeah, this is the end of the, uh, the semi-limited, I mean, the limited list. So, moving on to semi-limited. Uh, semi-limited. First, we have Summoner's Art, and... Uh, once again, uh, just like in the last, I think this is a fine hit, you know, they're going to go ahead and hit Cleese, uh, Summoner's Art down to, uh, two is a fine choice, uh, and I was probably a little bit conservative by putting Stout down to one, I was like, you know what, they're not going to hit Summoner's Art because of, uh, Ignites, but I'm not sure how they feel about Ignites com in comparison to how much they just want to kind of move out Cleese. Of course, uh, they're not making any money off of Cleese, so there's really no point in, you know, Cleese being, you know, the number one. Uh, pendulum deck in comparison to you know when to promote ignites and uh, future uh, pendulum based uh, you know archetypes but uh, you know if you hit scout down to one that might just kill the deck just because you know your opponent MST is that one scout you know that's it so you know really what can you do you gotta lower the consistency you know clearly still getting scout is still way too consistent so you gotta lower that consistency that's obvious but you know what you what are you gonna do uh, and then one of the ways that you can go ahead and do it is just put Summoner's Art down to two, had set precedence, still could do consistent. Cleaves are still doing too much. All right, Summoner's Art down to one. You know, just keep on hitting that consistency. And, you know, that's clearly uh, one of the key ways that you could go ahead and do it. Uh, of course, uh, you still have other cards like, um, uh, like you know, all that stuff. But they're a little bit too slow just because uh, it's not immediate. It's not like Summoner's Art, bam, get that scout, scout, search, you know. It's like, oh, all dies. All right, end my turn. Let me go ahead and get my uh, scout. Uh next turn scout you know it's slow it's slow and definitely slow in comparison to summoner's light so you know summoner's light down to two i think that's a fine hand all right moving on next we have book of moon and this is another thing that makes you suspicious just because of how powerful book of moon is you know there's a ton of people are like oh book of moon can go up to multiples and you know it's an egg one you know it's not it's not even that good book of moon is, like, book of moon is a fantastic fucking card uh, you know a quick play spell and go ahead and be used on your opponent your opponent's monster your monster and your other plays increase your flip plays uh it's just a great card and uh, Book of Moon has been at two previously, and the problem with Book of Moon is that Book of Moon will be played at whatever it is. Whatever it's at, it will be played. Konami said, you know what, Book of Moon is the only card that can be played at five. Would people play five Book of Moon? Hell fucking yeah, because Book of Moon is that fucking good. Yeah, sure, you can kind of consider it a neg one, but it's one of the best neg ones you can ever get in Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's just the power. You know, even in freaking liberal OCG, where they, you know, they're kind of lenient, lenient. I mean, shit, they even have Compulse at three. What's Book of Moon at? One. So... You really think that we're going to go ahead and put up Book of Moon? Like, no. No. Book of Moon is fan-fucking-tastic. So, everybody who wants multiple Book of Moons, you need to set the fuck down. Because this card is so good. So good. It deserves a spot at one. It's earned its spot at one. Alright. Next card we have... So, Teller Knight Altair. And, you know what? I think this is a fun hit. You know? There's a ton of people who are like, oh, Altair down to one. I'm like, that kills a deck. Because, literally, you go Deneb, search for Altair. Altair, some Deneb, search for... Yeah. That's it. So... Uh, you know, Altair 2, I think it's fine, you know, you go Deneb, search for Altair, Altair, summon Deneb, search for Altair, and that's it, you know, that's it, you can't go Altair, search, summon Deneb, search for Altair, again, uh, you know, I think that's a totally fine hit, justified hit, and, uh, you know, it's either Altair down to 2, uh, Deneb down to 2, Trip should still just be at 1, despite what you do to the main deck, and, you know, uh, there's another card that, uh, the Sliss also has, so we can go ahead and discuss that in tandem, uh, this list also put Rota down to 2, just like the other list, uh, to lower the consistency of Tower Knights, but also it kind of hits uh, Clown Blade, but then it also kind of hits, uh, you know, Necros, because, uh, you know, depending on how consistency-wise Necros it hits, they could take another route and just run, you know, Triple Rota for, you know, you know the Shriet and their Colossalus, and you know how powerful Shriet is. You know, your entire tribute, uh, and your Shish for a Warrior, you know, Shriet is just a great-ass card, and of course it's a Warrior, so, uh, you know, lower the consistency of that deck as well, so, uh, kind of sucks that, you know, uh, 
you know, we finally got Rota up to three, and lower tier decks are enjoying their triple Rota just for it to get hit, just because, you know, Talar Knights and Necros, but hey, if it's justified, it's justified. If it happens, I understand, but, you know, lowering the consistency, maybe Rota down to two, maybe I'll tire down to two, you know, I totally am on that, but Nova, going down to one, no. Triv, yes. So, there you go. And uh, that is the end of the summer limited list, so uh, no longer limited, we have Sinister Serpent. Yep, that's fine. Sinister Serpent till three, no one cares. Dark Strike Fighter, yeah, Dark Strike Fighter. I'm, 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 I'm curious about this too, because at first I thought, you know, Dark Strike Fighter, I can go up to multiples. No one's playing it. I thought they was gonna get the Goyo effect, where it's gonna be like one, two, you know, band one, two, three. There you go. But no, you know, it still continues to sit both on the limited list for us in the TCG and the OCG. So I'm thinking that Konami is like, you know what? We don't want to give you multiple Dark Strike Fighters just because we don't want you going to multiple Dark Strike Fighters and burn the living shit out of your opponent. You know, I think that's totally what they don't want you to do. You know, if you do it once, hey, that's fine. But multiple times, no. So I predicted that I was going to move last list and it didn't. No, I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, if it moved because, you know, Konami likes to do that where I predict something's going to happen next list and it doesn't. And then the next list, I'm like, I'm not going to predict it because it didn't happen last time. And then it does, you know, because I think... I think, I think the list that Gorge moved up to two, I predicted it was going to go up to three, and then it did it. And then I didn't predict it was going to go up to three on the April list, and then it went up to three on the April list. So, I don't know, maybe Konami just likes to make me look stupid. So, I didn't, I'm didn't. i not predicting Dark Knight Fighter moving this time, and watch me look at two or three. <laughs> I swear to God, but, you know, I just think that Konami is just like, you know, with the Dark Knight Fighter. So, another thing that makes us less suspicious. Um... Next, we have Dark Hole at three. And, you know, I don't think Dark Hole should be at three. I am. Dark Hole, despite, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, you wipe your monsters too. You know, if you will use it wisely, it can be Regeki if you don't have any monsters. And, you know, triple Dark Hole, that's unheard of. You know, uh, Regeki coming back is just craziness. But, you know, I mean, look at OCG. They have zero Regeki's, one Dark Hole. And good measure, too, because Dark Hole is a powerful card. And just to move this card up to uh, three is just kind of ridiculous, especially with Regeki. I think that they're going to keep Dark Hole at two. And I think it's going to have the BLS, uh, the BLS Chaos Buster Syndrome, where the more powerful card is at 1, and then the less powerful version of it, but still good, is at 2, just like BLS and Chaos Buster. And I think, you know, one big actually 2 dark holes, I think that's totally fine. So, uh, yeah. Moving on, uh, have, uh, Trigodia. Trigodia going up to 3. Uh, now, of course, Trigodia, in comparison to Gores, is the much stronger card. Not only can it become stronger than Gores, uh, it also has a better effect than Gores, being able to go ahead and pitch, take one of your opponent's monsters that has the same level, and, you know, copy that level XC with it, or whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can summon Trag when you stop back there. You know, you take that damage, drop, drop a Trag. Gores, you've got to have no cards on the field. So, you know, who's stronger between Dragon and Gores? You know, people are like, oh, well, Trag, depending on when you summon it, it can be much weaker. Yeah, but depending on when you summon it, you just wait to that last attack, take that attack, you can summon a weak Trag, but, you know, you could have that same level monster during your opponent's hand and take it. So, Trag is definitely the stronger of the two cards, in my opinion. And, you know, it's worthy of being at two, but it's just like, you know, should it be at two? Does anybody play it? That's the thing. It's like, is it worthy of being two in comparison to does anybody play it? So, if they want to go ahead and put Trag up to three, I guess. I think Trag is at three in the OCG as well. I think both Trag and Gore's up at three. So, you know, if they want to go ahead and do that, more power to them. Uh, next, once again, we have Honest. Yep, Honest again. And uh, it's just interesting that uh, lots of Honestes. Honestly, honestly, it's Honest. Uh, I still think Honest is kind of dumb, and you know. And I know light decks aren't, you know, the tippity top right now. You know, the only light deck that's really doing anything is, uh, 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 Tell Knights. And they sometimes run honest, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But honestly, that three is just a blatantly unhealthy card because all they need to do is just make one good light deck and all of a sudden, bam, triple honest. Oh my god, you know. So, I don't think honest should be at three, you know. If you triple honest, stack someone and, you know, game them, then that sucks too. And <laughs> that'd be sad if someone goes attack at you, monster, honest, 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 GG. So, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of honest going up to multiples, but hey, uh, that's what they want to do. They're like, hey, honest is not being doing anything. We moved up to two. Let's move up to three. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, Necros of Bionic. So, yes, they uh, think that banning Trish is the only thing that you can do. If you ban Trish, you can just give Necros everything back. So, they're like, unlimited Bionic. Get all your search shoes on there because you're not, they think that, oh, you're not searching for anything, you know? And I personally think this is wrong. You know, I think Nexus Bonic should go down to one. I think Unicorn should go down to one. Uh, I think that probably Manji should probably go down to one. 
Sandra should probably go to two, you know, lower that deck's consistency. That deck needs to get hit and consistency wise. That way the deck's not dead, but slow down and bring down to the pace of the other decks. Because clearly, you know, it's still the number one deck with 50% of the meta. And, you know, by just banning Trish and literally having, you know, triple Bryonic and triple, triple Sanju, the deck is still just like, wow, all right. So, um,. You know, one, you know, if, if if Trish is the problem, why don't you just give them fucking Browning back? You know, I mean, why don't you just give them prep back? So, there you go. Anyway, next card, Chaos Sorcerer. Like I said, I uh, I don't think Chaos Sorcerer should go up to a thirty. No, I I think that Chaos Sorcerer is underspotted too. Just like you know, Dark Hole. I, I like the BLS Chaos Sorcerer kind of you know, uh, dynamic. Just like with the Regeki Dark Hole, I think it fits and you know, it actually gives us some precedence on what Konami does at times. So, yep. Next card, check your sword to seven stars. All right, so that card can go up to three. Dragon Rose are banned. Who cares? No one's running a freaking seven deck. And then the last card, Lendary Sex Summer Shien. Sure, that card can go up to three as long as Gateway is banned. You know, you can't have freaking three Shien in one Gateway because I swear to God, if you activate Gateway and summon three Shien on me and I can't, and then you're going to negate three of my spells and traps and smack the living shit out of you. So, yeah. Uh, so, there you go. That is the end of this supposed another leaked list. So, things that are, of course, suspicious is. Uh, not only the not things that you didn't hit, but the things that you didn't bring back. You know, you didn't bring you know like Monster Gate up to two, which you know it's pretty uh, high prediction level. You know, you didn't bring Charge up to three. Uh, you didn't really hit Necros. I mean, yeah, sure you banned Trish, but you know Necros are still the shit. You did nothing when it comes to preparation for noting. You did nothing when it comes to the FTK. So literally, this is the list. Then you know prepare for. Multiple, multiple FTKs, Chicken Race FTK, uh, Ignite FTK with uh, Tempest Magician, uh, you know, Ignite FTK with Noden and, uh, you know, uh, Blade Phoenix, you know, it's just a lot of uh, things that are left untouched in this list, and uh, it's just kind of blatantly unhealthy, no surprise there, so, uh, do I like this list? No, I like the other one better, but like I said, this list isn't the real list, the other one's not the real list. Uh, like I said, I knew from the beginning of the video, I showed you, I will go ahead and link that in the description. You can go ahead and check that out. And yeah, just prepare. Like I said, Monday, Tuesday, we're going to get that list. So uh, prepare your anuses. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Sorry if I rambled, but I want to give my opinion on everything. Tell me what you guys think about this list. Comment in the comment section below. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys say. So, all right, people. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.